always man has sought a faith, a guiding star. For many millions throughout the world, that faith is Christianity. But whatever the creed, whatever the belief, the world needs tolerance and goodwill, touchstones of that faith that came from Bethlehem. Tolerance and goodwill. Without them, man achieves but little. Seeking unity, he is divided. Seeking peace, he finds but war. Even in the birthplace of Christianity, this was so. For Jew and Arab, Palestine was still a battleground. The United Nations reached a decision. Palestine would be partitioned split into Jewish and Arab states. For the two factions, these were the promised lands. In Palestine, the Jews rejoiced. After weary centuries, the homeless had found a home. But what of the Arabs? From Cairo came the call to arms, mobilization, planned uprisings, economic blockade. For the Arabs, the UNO decision meant holy war. Through old and new Jerusalem, the mob surged and counter-surged. And in the conflict, Jew and Arab suffered alike. When Christmas came to the Holy Land, men of goodwill were hard to fight. conference in London came the foreign ministers. On the agreement of the Big Four rested the future of millions. But could men of opposing faiths reach common ground? The urgent problem that awaited them was settlement on the terms of a German peace treaty. On this settlement depended the recovery of Germany. And on the recovery of Germany depended that of all Europe. Meanwhile, amid the ruins of a dozen countries, the peoples of Europe sought their guiding star. With a common need for unity, they were yet divided on the political means of achieving it. Conflicting creeds battled for the minds of men. Should they turn right or should they turn left? After years of fascist exile, the ballot box had come back. Symbol of man's right to a point of view and of his respect for that of his neighbor. But in many places, belief in creed was such that feeling ran beyond the ballot box. Many turned to older methods. Seeking peace, men found but war. Already the guns were sounding. Could the word prevail?
approaching deadlock, the London conference broke up. At Brighton gathered the British Conservative Party under their leader, Winston Churchill. Outvoted in the general election of 1945, the party now sought reorganization, a rallying of strength for future battles against the socialist government. In post-war Britain, with its enforced austerity and controls, political interest was deeper than ever before. Recent local elections had given but small indication of future trends. But here in Britain, the decision of the ballot box was accepted, an action confined to the marking of a cross. The Briton might have his point of view, but he still held respect for that of his neighbor. As socialist Herbert Morrison said, Do not fear to argue with the central government. when you think the central government is wrong about your affairs. It is one of the most cherished and essential rights of British civic democracy to believe that they are always right and the government is always wrong.